Abigail Gibbons here, creator and moderator of the WOW series. I'm so happy to be here with our next interviewee, Asia Fee. She's going to be speaking at our upcoming event in February, which is called Beauty Influencers. And we're all talking about how the current next generations of women are really paving the way for inclusivity in the beauty industry. I'm so happy to have Asia here. So she's going to be telling us more about her story, her challenges in the workplace, and how she got to creating her beauty and cosmetic company, um, Alchemist Asia, and also her story as a woman in STEM navigating her early career. Um, I'm so happy to have you here, Asia. I love your story, and I think it's so relatable to other women, you know, especially being a woman in STEM, you can have so many different interests, and sometimes we feel pressured to follow a certain direction or to kind of fit in a box. And already, you know, you, you graduated this year, right? I did, yes. Yeah, so you graduated this year and you're already paving the way for the current next generation. So I'll let y'all pause, even though I could talk forever. Um, and I'd like, go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Awesome. So thank you for the introduction. So um, as you said, my name is Asia Fee. I am a recent graduate from CSU Channel Islands um, here in California. I currently live in Bakersfield, but I was also living in Oxnard, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so I graduated with my bachelor's degree in chemistry. So I am a chemist. Um, I actually worked as a lab technician for uh, Parker Hannafin, which is a water filtration company. And then I also worked as a lab prep at my school. And on top of that, I was doing um, research. Uh, my primary research is actually anti-cancer drug development. So um, it's crazy to think that I went from like a high science and really detailed research topic to making cosmetics. And I'm gonna kind of discuss that sort of journey on how I, how I got there. So um, basically, like everybody else, um, I was deeply affected uh, by COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone had started like small businesses uh, in this past year because everyone was developing these new hobbies and noticing that they were having like really good success with it. Like they were really good at it and mm -hmm. like people crochet and it's amazing, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but this is actually something I returned to. So um, back when I was in high school, I used to have to make my own lipstick because I couldn't afford the colors I wanted. So you could buy a cheap nude, you could buy a cheap red lipstick, but no one had like blue, no one had orange, unless it was like Kat Von D and hers were like 26 a pop and I could not afford that. So I started making my own in high school and it did so well that I actually sold to a couple of close friends, um, but they weren't anything to like brag about. It was just enough to get like the color on your lips. But um, as soon as I got into college, I was, you know, focused on my career path and working in science. So I kind of put that on the back burner and I didn't really return to it until we quarantined. So uh, quarantine had started when I was in the last semester of my undergraduate studies. So I went online and I found myself with so much more extra time where I was cooking so often and I was making bath products so I started making bath bombs again and I started experimenting a little bit more and I got back into my cosmetics so um, this is something I revisited and I made the decision that I wanted to uh, make something out of it when I bought um, this lipstick or this lip gloss container so this is kind of how the actual business itself started um, I wanted to buy this specific lip gloss container for myself and it came in an 18 pack and I was like I'm not going to use all 18 of these like what the heck so I made more than one and I put them on my Instagram story and I was like hey does anyone like want these and people offered to buy them and they sold out immediately like I every single color I'd made like sold out and I was like wow like maybe this is a market for that and I even had a friend who asked like are you going to do something with this yeah. so I did some more research and I did a lot of planning and I put some stuff together and by September I was able to launch Alchemist Asia and at the time we only had a couple of products but now we have oh gosh like 50 products yeah, <laughs> it's it's a really wide I know, range <laughs> I didn't know that you just expanded and really launched in September because you have so many products now you have lip, lip gloss like scrubs like you have so many awesome different products mm-hmm Good for you. That's so <laughs> be sure to give yourself a pat on the back. I just want you to know. <laughs> okay, great. No, I love your story. And I think it's so cool that this is something that 
um, you know, the typical entrepreneur journey, you're in high school and you're like, I want to get the shade of lipstick, but it's too expensive or it's not quite the shade that I want or the shade for me, I'm just going to make it myself. You know, it's the do it yourself mentality. And I think it's really cool that you also came back to it during COVID and in the pandemic. And something I relate to too, you know, when the pandemic hit, I already started my business and I was definitely in that category of, you know, everyone else is starting their businesses so quickly and taking up new projects and like, what am I doing? And there kind of was like this pressure, I feel like, especially on social media when everyone's only talking about how great things are and how productive they are. I definitely mm -hmm. felt that pressure, you know, I have to fix this right now and, and get it done this way now. Um, but that's really cool that you just kind of took this back up and then and ended up selling out so quickly. Did you sell when you got those 18 lip gloss containers? Mm -hmm. Did you sell through your website or were you selling like just word of mouth through your friends? Um, at first it was just through like my DMs. So I put it on my Instagram oh. story and okay. people would DM me for it. And that's actually how my business started for a while. Like the first um, like month of orders was through DM. Like it was literally a small, small business. I mean, it's still a small business, but it was small. Yeah. And then um, I was able to use some skills I actually learned in school and I built a website so that's why it's not as fancy as like the people oh, yeah. who use the like generators to like make one I actually had to build mine which is still kind of iffy yeah. and I'm making some changes on it but I was able to build one no it looks great I'm with you we gotta <laughs> have to be scrappy until we can have everyone do all this for us <laughs> um but that's awesome and then before we get into as you know in these interviews we ask two questions which is challenge you've had to overcome and advice but before we get into that I just wanted to ask I'd love to hear a bit more about the products that you're currently selling on your website and kind of like the inspiration behind both I think it's really cool that everything science inspired and I think puts you in a really you know, unique niche and market there so that's definitely my favorite part was I wanted to implement the science aspect into my cosmetics mm -hmm. and then I decided I wanted to do like a chemistry theme to it so at first um I started with like chemistry names and then I branched out to like more science terms so I want to branch out to like all of those mm -hmm. so there's like um anything from like biology to um geology to I try to include all the sciences so they have like a product that is influenced by them which is super fun and like um oh my gosh my chemistry friends love it um but anyways <laughs> so the products we started with was the glosses and we did body scrubs and I did lip scrubs so those were like the base things I started with because these were all things I had made since I was in high school so I was like okay I have the base recipes for these and then this is where the actual chemistry came in was I started experimenting more with um, something I actually also studied in high school was um, emulsifiers so this is where you're able to um, blend your oils and your waters so everyone knows that oil and water don't mix and um, an emulsifier is what gets them to mix. So it's how you get like face creams where you read, okay, the first ingredient is water, yeah. but it's like an oil, like moisturizer. How does that work? So yeah. um, I really got to use my chemistry practice into making these products. So now I have more advanced products. So what we've expanded to, which is my favorite part is my skincare. Mm -hmm. So I make face creams, I make face masks, I make toners, all of that. And I get to use all of my lab gear and I think the best part about these products too is I try and use my platform to teach everyone the science of it. So I, you don't have to be a scientist to understand the science of it. So that's mm -hmm. why I try and keep it at different levels. So if I have scientists who follow me, I could go on further knowledge. So if they add a comment like, hey, what about this? I'll go into further detail, but all of my posts are very inclusive. So everyone can learn why it does this or why it does that as opposed to like, um, how would I explain this? So like, the essential oil category of science is, is very difficult. So I like to explain, okay, you know, some of those oils do successfully do this because there is research to back it up. Mm -hmm. Whereas like others are just like, oh, I use eucalyptus for this because I noticed that my allergies went away. It's not really based off of anything you can work with. So I try and blend those where it's, you know, holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. and actual science-based and I try and combine that so that way everyone has 
a place in this cosmetic like area <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> that makes any sense. sense it makes so much sense and like even you're doing it now like I am the like science never clicked for me probably for so many different reasons but I'm talking to you here now and I feel like I can understand what you're saying it makes sense and I'm like oh cool I never even thought about that or like emulsifiers or I don't even really know what that was and now I just learned what it means today and, how it works. <laughs> and I think that's so cool like, a key word that you use is inclusive um, and not just inclusive from where we think of in the beauty industry when it comes to how we look and our different skin tones and shades and things like that, but inclusive really for women in STEM and women who follow you, whether it's someone, me or a scientist. And I think especially for the next generation, like you can kind of open a, a younger woman's mind to being in the world of STEM or being interested in beauty and science and have it be less intimidating because you approach it in such a non-intimidating way. And I love that education factor is like so subtle, but really has an impact. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm super excited to have you speaking on our panel and, and sharing more. And um, I would love to jump into our first question. I think it's a great segue on that note. So uh, my question for you is, what is a challenge that you'd like to share with us today that you've had to overcome in your career, in your personal life, something that you would like to share with with all of us yes so I think the biggest one which you know um, eventually did impact my career was um, COVID but specifically the living situation that I experienced so back in May when I I'd literally just graduated virtually um, my lease was up and there was four of us living in our apartment and two of my roommates, because we went online, they were doing, they were only living in the area because of the school and because everything was online. They're like, I'm not going to pay 2,300 for rent if I can go home with my parents and just do school from there. And I was like, no, that totally makes sense. I get it. But that left just me and my boyfriend at the time to pay for the rent, but he had also lost his job. So he had to move back home. So it was just me. And I was like, I can't sign this lease. I can't afford this rent on my own. It was four yeah. people's worth of rent. So I had to move out. And um, for two weeks, I actually lived with a coworker. She let me stay um, at her place for two weeks while she was living out of town or um, she was out of town. And she and I worked at the same um, lab together. And after I moved out of her place, I was able to get an Airbnb that I stayed for a month. And then I was able to switch over to a room for rent that oh I found God. through a friend. Yeah. But I found out it was only temporary. She was like, yeah, so um, you can live here. And she was really kind about it. But um, her husband lived in Georgia seasonally for work. So he was out of the house for six months yeah. and that left six months for me to stay there. And he was coming back for Christmas. So she wanted me gone by like November and yeah. he doesn't like people living there apparently when he's home. So I was like, I oh. have nothing lined up. So I had been like applying to places. Um, I was ghosted a lot of times. There was a woman I was supposed to meet with to see an apartment and she never like showed up. It was like, it was a total nightmare. And I, um, I explained to people I had a quarter life crisis. Honestly, I remember calling my boyfriend from Bakersfield two hours away and I was crying and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be homeless. Like this was deeply affecting my work because I was moving hotels and Airbnbs and houses cool. just so I could still work in the area. Yeah. And um, this is actually where Alaska comes in too. So when I was making these products too, um, I was making them from that house I was renting in. Yeah. So I was making these like in my room and I had my lab gear in my room <laughs> making <laughs> them. And like from time to time, I'd like go into the kitchen if I needed to heat something up and then go back in my room. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> so it started really, really small. Um, but after I had this discussion with um, my boyfriend, but now fiance. Mm -hmm. oh my um, God, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, he was talking to me and he was like, look, like, I don't want to leave for school if there's a like potential chance of you being homeless. Like I, I won't be able to come home and like, you would have to move back with your parents. Like yeah. that's just not a situation I want for you because he knows how much I've worked in my career to be where I was. Right. So that's ultimately when we made the decision that I would go with him to Alaska and oh my gosh, I didn't realize what a great decision that was going to be. 
um, I was like super worried because I had to quit my job at the laboratory, which I was super sad about. Mm -hmm. I had to leave the area and we had to come move back to Bakersfield temporarily until we did move. But since then, my business has been doing great. Um, I, you're also aware that I work with Anina from um, The World Within Us. Yes. And that has been fantastic. I'm loving it with them. So had it not been for this kind of like um, area where I was looking for work because I anticipated having to quit my job, I wouldn't have applied for that job to work with Anina. I would probably wouldn't have continued my business either. I probably would have gotten a nine to five back home. Um, and some other things too that I can't bring up yet because I signed an NDA, oh, but I'm going to be working with the business <laughs> in the next couple months to help them with a product. So uh, gosh, all of this could not have happened had I not been almost homeless. So. Exactly. <laughs> no, I think that's so important. Also, sorry, I'm like my windows open and now I'm like all backlit. So I'm not disappearing into the darkness. It just appears that no, way. <laughs> But that's so cool. And I think there's so many recent graduates who are in your shoes. And like, you just have a story that's so important in terms of you graduated in the peak of a pandemic, you're trying to find a job, you're trying to find a place to live, like all of these things are so, so stressful. And I love now that you can reflect on it, you see the beauty of kind of like, when you're following your passions, and what and what your heart and gut is telling you to do, like everything kind of falls into place your business ended up taking off, which you're so right. Like you wouldn't have had the time, the time to do that if you're working a nine to five. You found Anina in the world with Ennis, which is an incredible organization too. I'll tag them so you guys can check them out. And Nina's also a, a speaker with us um, and how we met Asia. But anyway, um, and then you also have a new opportunity to move to an entirely new city. You're, it sounds like you have a really cool opportunity coming up with your business. So I'm so happy that it all worked out. I'm so happy that you shared it with us today too, because I think so many recent graduates or even anyone who kind of lost something during the pandemic will can really benefit from your story. It's just a nice reminder that no matter what life throws at us, like stay resilient in, in your pursuits of what you're passionate about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so on that note, I would love to, you know, after this journey and experience, what is your advice for other recent graduates for the next generation of, of women, of professionals? Um, you know, what would you like to leave them with today? Oh my gosh. I think this is something that actually applies to all majors, but something that's very good for STEM majors as well. Mm -hmm. Join clubs. Joining clubs is such a big like segue into bigger opportunities. And I didn't even learn this. So there's two different situations I can bring up. So one being um, I was the social media media manager for two clubs and a class. And that experience helped me get the internship working for Anina and because of that I would have never had that experience because running your own Instagram is so much more different than interacting with Absolutely. people coming from a third person yeah. and pushing out information and trying to get the engagement up like it's a whole different world so mm -hmm. right there alone that is something for um, like communication majors mm -hmm. like get into those clubs even if it's not like so like the clubs I was doing um, social media for was a chemistry club and a New Zealand club and the bee club, like things like that. And I'm like, it's not even related to the work I do right now, yeah. but the experience of working in that environment is going to help you so much in the long run. And then the other sort of experience I had working in a, um, or being in a club rather, um, I got really close with my professor who wanted me on his research. So through that, I was able to get into research. I was also able to meet other students, of course, um, but probably the biggest one was the internship opportunity. So the lab I was working in, I started in January because I got close with my professor and um, we were the first people to ever do this internship with this business. This was their first time ever having interns. Oh, cool. And um, through that, I was able to get hired on back in August. And so it went from like just, student wages, working as an intern in this environment to like having a full-time position. And that's such a big deal. Um, if like the internships are such a gateway, like if you can do a good job in an internship, there is very good hope of you getting hired on because you're gonna make a really lasting impression. Absolutely, that's such great advice, I love it. And it's so important. And I, I think you're, I think you have a 
well, you're not the first like recent graduate, I think we, or maybe the first recent graduate we've had sp speak, you know, with the WOW series and in an interview and at our event. And I think it's so important to really talk to the upcoming generation of young professionals, right? And that, that advice is so important and it's so simple, like sign up for one club, you know, do one thing out of your comfort zone and just see where it leads you. Um, I think it's, I think that piece is so important. Like you were a STEM major and you're a woman in STEM and you're still figuring out your career path there, but look at where just like one different opportunity led you and how, and yes. how it helped you in your career. <laughs> So I wish when I look back at my younger self in my career, like I definitely am inspired by you and wish that I followed, you know, more different untraditional opportunities. I went directly into the corporate world, kind of despite what my what my gut was telling me. So um, thank you for really for just being you and, and sharing your story with our community. Um, again, Asia is going to be speaking this coming February at our Beauty Influencers event. Um, she's going to be it's our first official all women of color panel, which I'm super excited about. These are all women who started different, yeah, who started different um, cosmetics lines, marketplaces. They're just really redefining the beauty industry in a way that's truly inclusive. You know, how Asia and I can come together and have a conversation. That's what we're gonna be doing with all these women. So um, if you wanna attend, message us. If you have STEM ladies, women in STEM, who you want to come as well and kind of see what else is out there or anyone who, you know, is just having trying to navigate life in the pandemic and, and their career path should definitely join. So um, Asia, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to share with our community before we log off? Um, I guess just to know that um, there's possibilities out there for you despite the pandemic that did not push back your abilities to do so much more. A lot of things are on online now. So really get out there. And again, like uh, um, Abby had said, push through and Go out of your comfort zone and you're going to find awesome opportunities.